happy that you're here today. We're happy that our pastor looks well and whole and beautiful. And uh, we just want, yeah, absolutely. And we're happy that you're here and you love the Lord and you're here to worship with us. So join us as we begin to sing hope for today and receive the hope. on how to handle the mic and uh, I've got a little green light I'm supposed to push a button and it says green I get to go good morning what a beautiful day isn't it a beautiful day anybody here want to say a great big hallelujah hallelujah why why do you want to say hallelujah today because God is good. Amen. All right, can we try that again, Debbie? <laughs> you taught this to me. Come on, Coco. Okay, let's try it again. Because God is good all the time. All the time. God, is God is good. And He is the center of hope, center of Christ. He is the center of your heart. He, your whole world, your whole life revolves around Jesus Christ. Yes? Hallelujah. I know that because I know most of you really well. And that is reason to have a hope that will never, ever, Amen. ever disappoint. Lord God Almighty, we are here today to say thank you. We love you. We adore you. We are grateful. Oh Lord, today lift our eyes. Lift our faces to see you and to see the blessings that you have put in our life. Oh, yes, we are blessed. Oh, yes, you are good all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. You are good. And, Lord, we just bless you. We thank you. We thank you that even for some of us today who came with hearts that are broken, with lives that are wounded, broken in relationships, having suffered loss. Oh, God, we thank you that you are turning those hurts into healings. We thank you that you are turning those wounds into medals of honor. Oh, Lord, use us. Dwell within us. Lift us up for your name's sake. And now we worship you. We bow before you, our Lord, our Savior, our Creator, our God, Mighty Counselor, Everlasting Father. Amen. 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 We're here to worship the Lord this morning. I know you don't have any bulletins, but I think you know this song.
up the name of Jesus. And you know, the interesting thing about not having the bulletins is you all look forward and you all grin and you all smile and you all sing. And that's wonderful. And all these songs are songs that you know. And one of our favorites, I know this is Pastor Sheila's absolute favorite, is I See the Lord seated on the throne and exalted. And the train of his robe is filling this temple, this place. Amen? And we begin to cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Oh, just begin to worship him. Begin to praise him. For he is God, Jehovah. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. And I see the Lord.
of this place called earth and then you filled it with light and you filled it with life and you breathed life into us how can we not stand in awe of you the creator and then you sent your son Jesus to show us who you were that you were about love and then you sent him to a cross to take our sin away the ultimate sacrifice to bring us back into a restoration with you because you want to be that close to us. And then as you brought your son back into heaven, you sent your Holy Spirit to be our comforter that we might feel your presence always. Oh, Lord God, we stand in awe of you today and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Okay, I have to ask the question. How many in this room watched any election coverage whatsoever? Even three minutes worth counts. I don't care if you saw it on the news. Here's what I saw. It was really interesting. When, uh, when, um, when one side won, when the Democratic ticket won, I saw that auditorium. Do you see that auditorium? Thousands of people. I saw people in that auditorium who would normally be in church doing this. Jesus loves me, this I know. <laughs> but that night, man, there was a party going on. Their hands were in the air. They were dancing around. I saw ladies 80 years old doing this, <laughs> dancing to Fleetwood Mac, you know. <laughs> Woo, my guy won, my guy won. And then I saw, I saw the Republican side. They went to that. And it was as if somebody died. Somebody died in that place. Right? That place looked like a lot of churches I've been in. Dead. Dead. Now, it doesn't matter who won and who lost, which side won and which side lost. Go back eight years, and it doesn't matter if the Republicans win. You see the same thing in the opposite side of the Democrats. It looks like somebody died if, if their guy lost. Here's the point. Here's the point. What were they celebrating so much? You know what I'm saying? You thought as if Jesus came, they were celebrating so much. Or when the Republicans win, the same thing. But yet we don't do that in our churches. Yet in church, things can actually happen. Not an election. That's just man ruling man. We're in a place where we celebrate the living God that can change lives, our lives, the lives of our friends that can heal. That's something we're celebrating. So when Debbie says, lift your hands in the air and celebrate the Lord, celebrate the Lord. Because you're praising and celebrating to somebody that can actually move and do something to change your circumstances. Does that make sense? That's what I took away from the election. I was reminded why we celebrate the ultimate ruler, which is the Lord Jesus. He is on the throne. Whether you were depressed this week because your guy lost or you were celebrating because your guy won, ultimately, Jesus is on the throne, and that's who we need to celebrate. Right? Amen? Amen. So, in light of that, I'm going to read from Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Do you feel that in your life? My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. Because quite frankly, folks... That's where we live, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness 
is better than life. Think about David writing these words. David's the king in a temple, right? In his palace. And yet he's writing, your loving kindness is better than life. And he had a pretty good life. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Believe me, David had plenty of water and wine and food. And yet, he's writing, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. That's what we're to be about, Amen. praising the Lord. The Amen. Lord. Amen. We're celebrating Veterans Day this weekend, and we're excited to lift our country up before the Lord and to pray for our country. I really don't think you need your bulletins for these songs either, but we're going to make this song a prayer. God bless America. America the beautiful. And America. You know the <laughs>
Okay, I'm tempted to give you a challenge. You may be seated. I'm tempted to give you a challenge to go and find better worship music anywhere, but I don't want you going anywhere else looking for it. I want you right here. <laughs> oh, man, thank you, worship team. I, you guys bless me. You really, really bless me every week. And, um, you know, I just want to, I've got so much I want to say this morning, and I'm not giving the message. That's a good thing. Because Pastor Harold is giving the message. Do you guys love it when Pastor Harold preaches? I do. You know, I, I, I guess I'm kind of a selfish pastor. I love sharing the pulpit because it means I get to be fed as well. You know, and a lot of pastors, they have to preach every single Sunday. And it's no wonder that we are losing pastors. Pastors are dropping. In, um, it's not, I want to start by saying First of all, I want to thank you for last week on behalf of Pastor Jim and, and Pastor Harold and myself. The outpouring of love from this congregation, um, the cards and the gift certificates, I can't begin to tell you how they touched our hearts and, and we were just blessed. And um, I don't know if any, I, I do know that some of you, because we've had talks, some of you have been in hostile territory from time to time in your life. I never was until about four or five years ago. Suddenly I found myself in hostile territory. And it's really, it's really takes a toll on a person. And you begin to wonder, um, you begin to even ask yourself, God, am I loved? Because when you're in hostile territory, it can, it's that hard. It's that hard on your self-esteem and how, and how you feel about yourself. And, but you will see in your life, you go through seasons and there are times of war or hostility, whatever you want to call it. And there's also times of peace. And God delivered me from a hostile territory and brought me to Hope Center of Christ. And it's the, the love and the time of peace. It's a season of peace and love for you and for me, for us as a congregation. And I know I, I speak for, for many of you as well because I've heard it. But but, so the outpouring of love was just, I, I can't begin to tell you how much it meant to us, first of all. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you too. I love you too. Please know how much I love you and care for you. In fact, on the back of your bulletins, you will see, I've asked Brian Muma to add, the very back, very bottom, it says, if you ever need prayer or pastoral counseling, that's my home phone number. Please do not hesitate to call me day or night, any kind of emergency, you have a family member in the hospital, whatever. I am your pastor, and I want you to be able to reach me if you ever need me for anything. Um, if, you're, if you're going through a challenge, if, you're going through, if your marriage is going through trouble, you know, I'm here to help you. I'm here to walk with you as a couple, whatever you need. Please feel free to call me. That's, that's there for you. And I also, we have some, I want to give you some updates. Uh, many of you have asked, been praying for my mom and dad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, one, some of the things I've learned is that it is going to, it, it, they planned on about 10 days of, for the trial, but they're not every single day. That's a good thing and a bad thing. So they're actually going up two days a week. So it looks like it's Wednesday and Thursday. So they've been up there now for two weeks, Wednesday and Thursday. And um, I would think it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday. My mom finished testifying, and then Dad took the stand. And um, so now they shouldn't have to take the stand again. So I, I feel like the, the worst is behind them because I know that that was really weighing heavy on their heart, you can imagine. Um, so there's other people who will be taking the stand. And, and um, I, have, I don't have his permission, but I know we're close. We're family here. But Wednesday, Jim Penner takes the stand. So I, I pray that you'll pray for, for Jim. Please, that, please pray for Jim on Wednesday. And um, so, you know, we, just, we pray that, that there will be justice, God's justice. And we pray that the truth will be revealed. You know, that's, that's, what, we were really, that's what I'm praying for as well as God's sustenance for my parents, you know, when you're 83 and 86 and you're going through something like this, it, it, is, it is challenging. So um, I do have a letter that um, I sent to some of you via email. Some of you, I don't have your emails, so uh, we have a database and it just pulls up 
and I just do like a mass email. And so some of you, I know, because I've looked at some of your emails are on there and some of yours aren't. So last week I brought hard copies of the letter. And if, and the wonderful thing is that um, Brian Muma, Brian, will you wave? He's over there on camera. One, two, or three. I don't know how, what they're numbered, but <laughs> Brian does our bulletins. They're his gift, he, the printing and everything. He puts them together every single Sunday. And he also has finished engineering and putting together a, a new website for, for Hope Center Christ. And it's almost ready to be put live. He's put a lot of work into it. And so thank you, Brian. So he's waiting for just a few little, little minor um, corrections that we, the leaders, have to communicate to him. And then it should be up and running, and I would think, probably maybe even this week. And, but th that's going to be a place where I'll be able to post these letters for you guys, too. So watch for that. At any rate, because that I want you to understand from what I've heard from my parents what the trial's really all about. I think you, you, have a, you're, you deserve that, to hear that from, from me. But I don't want to take up too much time in church doing that. So um, the, another update I wanted to give you was... Um, we recently did, and some of you saw that and some of you signed up for it, we did an offer, a campaign, to get um, hard mail addresses. And hard mail addresses are important to databases and in addition to email addresses. And so we offered a CD of two messages by me and some songs by Scott and Debbie and the worship team. And we had an amazing response. What I want you guys to hear is that out of the nearly 500 addresses, names and addresses that we got, that's a lot. 30% um, are from out of the country. 30%. Does, does that do to your spirit what it did to mine when I heard that? I was like, whoa. You know, we're not just a small little church plant. We are a global ministry even here today. So I want you guys to, to know that. You're the home front. You're the foundation. You are the capstone, the keystone of this ministry. And it's global already. The other thing, you know, we, we're only eight months old. That's it. And so the other thing you need to um, know is that we have an app. Do you all know what an app is? And Alex, where's Alex? There's Alex. You stand, Alex. Alex. Alex does for a living, he does, his company does trailers for Hollywood movies. And he was just recognized recently by Variety Magazine as one of the top trailer producers in Hollywood. Okay? Now, I share this with you because Alex participated in the Daniel Fest, like many of you did, and we were praying for increased favor and increased positions of influence from our members, for our congregants, right? And Alex has seen that. Alex is witnessing that in his life. And he's also using those same gifts to help us. So he created the app for Hope Center of Christ. Um, we're working on our, our television program, Half Hour, that we will we'll begin airing hopefully in the next couple of months. And, uh, but we first are doing, and it's the, the name of the program is called The Power of Hope. The Power of Hope. Do you like it? Yeah. I like it. So it came from him, I think. So we have... Today, it's already been approved by Apple at the Apple Store app, Apple's, the App Store at Apple. You can right now, if you have an iPhone, the Android version's not, not out yet, is it, Alex? And, uh, but you have, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the App Store today and you can download the Power of Hope app. It's out there. People are downloading it. And, do you, and, and here's what that means. That means that people in China can download this app. People in the Middle East, in Pakistan, can download this app. Well, okay, what's on the app is streaming of are these services. 
and the and the archive services. So anywhere you go, you have an iPhone, and pretty soon or your Android, you can. Um, you, once you have your app, you push on it. And first of all, you get to hear their music, which is awesome. If you want the the video, the service, and you can scroll through, you can fast forward through like this part, my announcements, you know, whatever you want to do, you can fast forward through that, and to the message. But it's all there. It's all there for you to watch and play from anywhere and at any time, whenever you need it. There's also a place for you to um, connect with our our Facebook pages with me and with and you guys you guys know that I'm on Facebook and you know that I get private messages from people all over the world and I personally answer every single one of those messages so if you ever need to reach me that way that's another way to reach me and so that's available there's a prayer there's a prayer um, part of it too right Alex and the request prayer and we will and that's where we're going to be needing some of you in the future to to be a prayer team for these people. So when we get the prayers, we can forward them to you and you guys can pray for them, right? How many of you would like to do that? To be a prayer team for people praying for them all over the world? Yeah. Be really cool. You come here Sunday morning or we send it to you by email. You pick up names and the prayer requests and, and you pray for them all week long. Cool, huh? How do you like being a part of this ministry? Isn't this cool? Yeah. So that's it. Did I? It, yes, Jim. And a da- yes, a daily devotion is also on there. And I want to recognize my sister Gretchen, Gretchen Wave. Where is she? There she is. She likes to hide in the back row. But on our Hope Center of Christ Facebook page and on the app, she puts together, she's organizing the, all of our do- devotions. I like to call it a dose of hope. And she puts wonderful photos with them. They're very inspirational. And those will be going on the app as well. But she does all of that in her spare time. So then we want to continue to pray for a new church home at this time. I've had a few of you say to me, Sheila, I've come and I'm always wondering, are you going to still be there this Sunday? And, uh, you know, because (laughs) this is temporary. And first of all, I want you to know that we are looking. We've, we've actually seen one place that we really, really like. We can't afford it right now, but, that does, but we, I'm not going to limit God. So we're, you know, we're praying that God will provide a way if that's where he wants us. Um, in the meantime, we will be here, or we will let you know, Okay. And we'll give you plenty of forewarning. We have signed a contract with the hotel that will be here through February. So you can count on that. And, um, so, and just continue to, to pray for our new church home. It just might be that God wants us to be in this tent, temporary abode, to learn to wait on him, to learn to trust him, and to learn that he's all we need, even more than property, right? So that's where we are. I wanted you to have updates for me in that regard. And so now we're going to be taking the tithes and offerings, and they go to this ministry. And um, I want to thank you for supporting this ministry. You guys have been faithful in giving your tithes and offerings, so let us pray. Oh, Lord God, you have given pressed down, running over. We are blessed. Oh, Lord, our cups aren't half empty. They're not even half full. They are running over with abundance. You are a God of abundance. You are a God of more than we need. You are a God who will never desert us and never forsake us. You are a God who will always be there day and night a prayer, just a prayer away. And so, Lord, I ask you right now to reach out, Holy Spirit, and touch each and every life that's here today. Whisper in their ear, thank you. Thank you for serving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving your life for me. So, Lord, we thank you for that word. We thank you for that assurance. And now we give back to you with love and gratitude. 
Amen. Well, now that you have your bulletin, Faith, Hope, and Love is our theme song that we have for this time. and But you know it, so you don't really need it, do you? Come on, sing with us as we sing our... About a mother, you only get one. Well, I think that goes for our praise team. You only get one as good as this. So we got to give them glory, honor, and praise. You know, I don't like to use a handheld mic, so let me make a few adjustments here if I can. My mouth is big enough anyway. I probably don't need it. Can you hear me okay? 
We'd like to give God glory, honor, and praises. Praises for the hope that he gives us in Jesus Christ. Praises for the faith that he's instilled in each and every one of his believers. And love that he showed us by his shed blood at Calvary. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, we have invited you into our presence, dear God, because we love you. We know that when you hear your saints honoring you and giving you praises, dear Heavenly Father, you rejoice. We can see the smile on your heart, dear Heavenly Father. We can see the smile in your face. And dear Heavenly Father, we, we are just so honored that you have decided to join us today. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit that is with throughout this entire room, dear Heavenly Father. We can feel it from the rooftop to the floor. We can feel it from wall to wall, dear Heavenly Father. And as we look at your word today, dear God, we pray that it would change us in a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father. Change us to walk boldly in life. Th thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that it would change us to be bold in the way that we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much that you receive us so, so, so very much at the foot of your throne, dear God. Thank you, dear God. You are worthy to be praised. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 It has been said that today is Veterans Day. And they're going to make a few adjustments on Veterans Day. Okay. Oh, you know I'm going to move. No. I move. I move however the, the Spirit calls me to move. And if the people in China get the message, that's a great thing. If they don't get a message, that's a great thing. Because God is going to give the message to whomever he wants to get it. I used to have a little a transistor radio when I was a kid. And I used to listen to a show called Cousin Brucey. You might not know Cousin Brucey. He wasn't a gospel guy. But I used to love that music. And boy, he used to come from California. And I used to have to squeeze out and listen to him, but nothing stopped me from listening to Cousin Brucey. Nothing will stop a child of God from hearing the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Folks, we're going to talk today, we're going to talk today about, uh, about something you've already heard about, and that's about the love of Jesus. We're going to talk today about uh, our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ. We're going to talk and we're going to look today at some veterans of the Bible. We're going to look at those veterans just like we're going to look at some of our, our secular uh, veterans today. Because I believe that America is a great nation. And America, and America has sent her boys and girls throughout the world where there's been a chance and a desire for people to have freedom. They have sent their boys and girls to die. I know that people that, that are not born here in America that have heroes in their own country they want to give homage to their heroes in their countries. They're heroes that have given their lives unselfishly like American heroes have done. And so we're going to bring some attention to our heroes, and I encourage the people throughout the world to bring homage and bring some type of remembrance to their men and women that have died in battle for their good. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... The day the, the scripture reading is going to be from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Dear brothers and sisters, if another Christian is overcome by some sin, you, are God, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back on the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. I better read that again. Be careful that you don't fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's troubles and problems, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone in need, you are only fooling yourself. Really, me and you are nobodies. 
Be sure to do what you should, for then you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well. And you won't need to compare yourself with anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Amen? Amen. We are each responsible for reading and studying and meditating on the Word of God. We can't come to the service on Sunday to hear the Word of God and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and go to church on Sunday. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the Word of God should help their teachers by paying them. Don't be misled. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. You will always reap what you sow. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful desire will harvest the consequences of decay and death. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life. Life in the Spirit. So don't get tired of doing what is good, Hope Center and the Friends of Hope Center. Don't get discouraged, Hope Center, and give up. For we will reap the, a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Mm. And who sets the appropriate time? God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone especially to our Christian brothers and sisters. We are to do good, especially to our Christian brothers and sisters. And may God add his blessing to the reading of that word. I'd like to thank the congregation last week that prayed for your leaders. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I was impressed by a young man that, that prayed for us. He, uh, he has, uh, I guess, bipolar or some type of uh, uh, sickness. But let me tell you, when God touched him and put those words in, in his mouth, they touched me. And I'm sure they touched a lot of you. When this little young man right here prayed, he prayed like, man. Yes, he prayed like a David. He prayed like a David. He prayed with understanding. He prayed with assurance that he knows his God. And man, let me tell you, and woman, let me tell you, that is what we have to do. We have to get as many kids as possible into our congregation, into the congregation around the world. We need young folks. We need young people. We need you. We need to have you to be warriors for Jesus Christ. So thank you for your cards and donation, and thank you for the wonderful music that is shared here every day, or every Sunday. I also would like to say that today's message, if God delivers it to me the way he gave it to me, he may change his mind. I don't want it to be a downer. I want it to be an upper. But I'm going to deal with some subject matter, or God is going to deal with some subject matter that may make you afraid or may turn you off about, uh, from wanting to give your life to the Lord, but so be it. It's not me that's given the message, it's the word of God. But before we go forward, I would like to give glory and honor, like I said, to our veterans. And so I'm going to read a prayer from one of our great veterans of the past, a General George Patton. He says, God of our fathers, who by land and sea have ever led us to victory, Please continue your inspiring guidance in this greatest of all conflicts. Strengthen my soul that the weakening instinct of self-preservation which besets all of us in battle shall not blind me of my duty and my manhood. To the glory of my calling and to my responsibility to my fe fellow soldiers, Grant to our armed forces that disciplined valor and mutual confidence which ensures success. Let me not mourn for the men who have died fighting, but rather let me be glad 
that such heroes have lived. If it be my lot to die, then let me do so with courage and honor in a manner which will bring the greatest harm to the enemy. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Let us live and bring that greatest harm to the enemy that's in our lives. And we know who that is from the pit of hell. That is Satan. Let us bring the greatest harm we can through the name of Jesus Christ. And please, O oh Lord, protect and guide those I shall leave behind. Give us the victory, Lord. Give us the victory. When Christ went to the cross on Calvary, he gave us the victory. Are you living like you're victorious? And then our founding father, George Washington, he, write, he writes, and I quote, It is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Boy, this is something. So do we have any veterans in the house today? Amen. Do we have any family members here that had veterans that are no longer with us? Amen. Do we have any young men or women that's planning on going into the military services? Do we have any... Uh, Homeland Security personnel here, or police officers. I want to read this to you, and I hope that it inspires you. I'd like to welcome all veterans, men and women, of all wars, conflicts, national security, and freedom fighters. Veterans, we thank you for your dedicated service to our nation. And we thank all of the American men and women in uniform today, who continue to guard the sea lanes and airways and man the distance and dangerous outposts of the world to protect our nation and our freedom to worship. We also thank members of our National Guard and Reserve units as well as our Homeland Security personnel, including policemen, firemen, and health officials who recognize each day in an age of terrorism that our homeland can quickly become the front line of danger. We honor you for your patriotism and service, and we also honor those of you by being prepared to fight, served our nation by deterring and preventing conflict. To all of those who served in military uniform, whether you return to parades and adoring crowds or to silent drums and inner voice that tells you that you did your duty, we thank you. All Americans owe you a debt that cannot be repaid. For those of us that are not veterans, how many of you have not served in the military or some of those other? Okay, we got quite a few. Listen to this. This is for you. <laughs> for those of us that are not veterans, we are blessed to be Americans. And each of us has citizens' duties. Our founding father, James Madison, wrote about 200 years ago that a free people and a democracy requires more trustworthy human qualities and virtues from its citizens than any other form of government. Virtues and trustworthy. Virtues and trustworthy. And our nation was founded on Christian values. And that is what the Christian values endow us with truthfulness, and virtues of high qualities. I should get an amen right about there. Amen. Thank you, God. Now let's get into our message. You're in the army. You're in God's army. If you are a believer, you are in God's army. The war wages around us, the war between good and evil. 
I was a Vietnam veteran, somewhat reluctant, <laughs> somewhat, somewhat uh, whatever you want to call it, but I was a Vietnam veteran. I didn't come on to parades. Took me a couple of years to come down. I'm standing in, in, on my college campus, and all of a sudden, I begin to boo-hoo and cry. Didn't know what was going on with this old guy. But all I could deduce it to was that I had made it home, didn't know I had made it home, and, and I thought I was fitting in, but I wasn't fitting in, and hearing about uh, how they had treated the Vietnam vets that I had not been witness to, and how I had hid, how I had hid part of my past of being a Vietnam vet because people didn't think too much of us. And so it was very painful. Well, folks, we're going to talk about some pain today about you believers that are hiding. We need you to come out of the shadows. We need you to stand up. We need you to talk boldly. I learned something very valuable as a veteran, and I think most of veterans do. And what I'm going to try to do today is to parallel the veterans of, of mankind and then the veterans of our disciples that spoke the good news to its people. The first, the first uh, the, uh, uh, points that I would make would be the veterans. Veterans usually love God, their nation, and the world. They carry out their orders even if it takes them into harm's way. They let the love of God be a reflection of their character, and they fight for freedom against all odds. Veterans are usually thought to be very brave people, but let me tell you something. In Vietnam, I found myself afraid, yet confident. Veterans knew or know their mission. They are heroes of our nation, and they are willing to lay down one's life for his fellow man. Veterans have a vision of peace, even though they are men of war. Veterans are welcomed home by their fellow men, and they reserve a place in our history. Now, that's the, our veterans, our human veterans. Now, let's look at the veterans. Thank you. Amen. Let's look at our veterans. I'm in good stead if, if the pastor loves it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, so let, let's look at our veterans in the Bible. Our veterans in the Bible... They love Christ and the world. They had orders to carry out, even in harm's way. They would tell the people about Jesus Christ and the freedom from sin. They had confidence, yet they were afraid. They knew their mission. They were heroes of the world and God's kingdom. They were willing to sacrifice and risk their lives to save mankind. They had a vision to make disciples of the world. They received honor and they attained the promise of eternal life. Amen. Welcome, Hope Center. This is the recruiter station this morning. And God is recruiting a few good men and a few good women. Let us spend a little time this morning talking about veterans of the Bible who through their dedication to the commands of Jesus Christ changed the lives and history of men and women throughout the world. It is important that we never forget these men and women of the Bible for they are mentors and guides to what children of God is supposed to be. Throughout the Bible, we see veterans who are willing to fight and lay down their lives for the teaching of God and to save the lives of men. They are in the army of the Lord. Through faith, hope, and love, they gave all that they had in the service of their kingdom, and their commander-in-chief was... I heard a child say it first. Said Jesus. Amen. 
was Jesus Christ. And as we study God's words and come face to face with these men and women, these disciples, men like Paul and Peter and women like Priscilla and Ruth and Esther and men like John and Matthew, Mark, Luke and Timothy, my God, they have laid some groundwork. They have laid a wonderful path way for us to follow to receive the blessing that God has bestowed upon us. They have also given us a great example of what we have to be busy about as recruits in God's army to save our world. We should never stop working until everyone has heard the truth about Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is where it gets a little scary for some. I know it did for me when mortar shells was going overhead and I could hear the rocket and the sirens going on and, and I could feel and experience men trying to hide up under each other's body to use the other person as a shield from the scrap metal and from the danger that they were in. This is where it gets scary. It gets scary when you go into a, into a neighborhood or a strange place that refuse to listen to the things of God, but you know it is your responsibility to take the word of God where they have not heard the word of God. Into strange lands. We have a lot of strange lands right here in America. We have a lot of strange lands right here in Anaheim. We have a lot of strange lands throughout the world. But we got to be bold, folks. We got to be bold. This thing that we call a faith is not for chickens. Amen? And don't worry, because God, because Jesus Christ said, look. Man, this is where it gets scary. Christ said, look. What they did to me. Look what they said about me. Let's see what he was doing. Let's see what Christ was doing. Christ was telling people about God. He was telling them to be on their guard against Satan and his demons and temptation and sin. He was healing the sick. He was performing miracles. He was going up against the establishment that claimed to have been waiting for the Messiah, and yet they did not recognize the Messiah. He was spit on. He was given thorns as a crown. Folks, are you in the army? Are you in the army of the Lord? Are you? You see what they did to our commander-in-chief. But he said, be of good cheer. Amen. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He said, the things that I have done, you will do also. And when we look at the book of Acts, and we see what these disciples who set up under the, the, the feet of Christ and, and learn how to be soldiers in God's army and to be solicited in his army to go and make disciples of all nations and all men, telling them about me, giving them the good news about salvation, giving them the good news about sanctification, giving them the great news about grace, giving them the great news that they will overcome death. For he's taken away the sting of death and has blessed us with eternal life. Fear not he who can destroy the body, but fear he that can destroy the soul. We have to be busy doing what God wants us to do. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The disciples were just ordinary people like ourselves until God touched them through the power of their relationship with Jesus Christ. How many of you profess to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Almost everyone. Almost everyone. So you see, folks, we do have work to do. We do have work to do. 
Would you like to be a soldier in God's army? Yes? No? All right. When I was in the military, they said, Airman, come here. I said, yes, sir. Airman, show reports for duty. Do you think you're an army? Yes, sir. Do you think you can lead? Yes, sir. Now I'm going to ask you again. Do you want to be in the army of the Lord? Yes, sir. Yeah, right. You're looking sharp already. <laughs> Allow God to come into your life and touch you. And touch you. If you're still wondering if God has touched you, then go back again and say, God, touch me. If you have to throw out a fleece, throw it out and say, God, touch me. If your fleece is going to be, God, if you give Hope Center of Christ a permanent home, then I believe that you touch me. The early disciples had the opportunity to walk with Jesus. Jesus knew that he would suffer death on a cross and that he would be separated in physical form from the disciples and his followers who would be scattered. So what did he do that his army of men that loved him may continue his command of love? God caused the Holy Spirit, his spirit, to enter all believers as we establish a relationship with God and give our lives to serve in his army, we too, like the disciples, should know that we serve an awesome God. The, dis the disciples, can, can you picture this? The disciples were about giving the good news about saving people's lives. And they would go into somewhere like Lystra or Derby or Antioch or Iconium, and they would go and they would tell people about the good news of Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles. And man, they would get jazzed up. Just like I said, are you in the army? Yes, sir. You see, they would get jazzed up just like that. And then these other jealous Jewish uh, or intellects would come in and say, you can't believe that. You don't believe that, do you? And just that quick, the people will turn, and they would want to harm the disciples. So what am I saying? What am I saying, dear Lord? I am saying, folks, that we have people like that today that call themselves Christians. They call themselves all these different denominations. They call themselves all of this and all of that. But there's one focus that you have to maintain regardless of all those things. And what is that? You have to remain focused on Jesus Christ, where the word of God is being taught truthfully and effectively, there he is amongst us. If we are not reading the word of God, if we are not studying the word of God, if we are not meditating the word of God, you can be bamboozled. You can be taken out. And when your enemies come up against you, even though one time they said they believe and now they don't believe and they want to throw a stone at you, they want to crush you, you can be of good cheer because your commander in chief said, the things I do, you shall do also. And where I go, I have prepared a mansion for you. Many mansions. Amen. Amen. God, where are you taking this message? Because you've thrown me off of this page. <laughs> but, but there's going to be some collateral damage along the way. I'm trying to get back to where I thought I was going. You know, I, I am just saying, guys, if God was crucified, what do you think? Why are we being so timid about getting this word of God out to people? If our commander in chief was crucified and he told us that we are going to bear our burdens, what are we so afraid about? He knows how we feel. When he hung on that cross, he said, my God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And we're going to find ourselves out there on the battlefield. 
we're going to be scared knocking in our boots. And we're going to know that we are serving the great Lord, the great I Am. And we're going to feel like he has forsaken us. But he said he has never forsaken us and that he will never leave us. He will be with us until the end of time. Amen? Amen. 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 God, I guess you threw that page away, so I'm going to move to this one. <laughs> you know, when we begin to live a godly life and like God, and we begin to walk boldly in our lives, and, and you begin to run up against walls and opposition and persecution and all of that, let me tell you, God will start performing wonders, signs, and miracles through you. He's not, he will not perform those signs and wonders and miracles through you so that you can get the glory. But he will do that so that people that need to believe that Jesus Christ is will believe that. When we look at Acts 14, when when Paul and Barnabas, they go in and they see this crippled guy that was crippled from birth. He's just laying there. He wants to be healed. Paul and Barnabas are talking. And the scripture says, Paul looked over at that crippled man and he said, stand up. That's all he did. He said, stand up. Because he had recognized the faith in that man. And that faith that that man had, that Paul and, and Barnabas were in the army of the Lord, Amen. he believed that they had the power, and he stood up. He stood up. That's the kind of power we are supposed to have. Not just your pastors, but you're supposed to have that power. And what I like about this Holy Ghost power, the, the power of Jesus Christ that's in us, what I like about it when I look at my commander-in-chief, when he wants to heal somebody, he, he says, you're healed. <laughs> Lazarus, come out. That's all. We are men and women of God, and when someone comes to us and tells us they have a problem, we got a 15-minute prayer session going on. But if we are truly connected with Almighty God, we can say, Satan, flee in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Job, be restored in the name of Jesus. Family, be healed in the name of Jesus. When we're walking in the power of Almighty God, we don't have to write a dissertation of prayer. We don't. And Barnabas and them, they carried so much power because they were so close to Jesus Christ that the people came out and started praising them. Oh, Zeus. Oh, Zeus. Oh, Hermes. Oh, Hermes. That's what the secular world do. When they see someone that is closely connected with God, they want to start recognizing man, that man has done it. And that's a danger in that. And Paul and Barnabas, they recognized it just like that. They said, stop. We are only mere men like you. Our power comes from the one who has fed you over the years. Our power comes from the one who has caused your plants to grow. Our power comes from the one that gives you life. Our power comes from the one that we've been speaking about. And they ripped their clothes and said, stop this madness. And give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Let God's Spirit descend on you, and it will change your life forever. Amen. And this is to the young folks. What are you waiting for? Come on now. Come on. What are you waiting for? Us? us old dogs know where you're at and know where you've been. We need to get you in these seats so that you can receive this power, this power to change lives, this power that will change your life, this power power that will want to make you to go out and be a hero in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So we got to continue to teach this good news and tell all these young folks here what we're talking about. God wants us to use all uh, God wants us all to, I'm going to read it right sooner or later. God wants to use us all in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. 
the good news that Jesus came to earth in human form and that he lived among us and that he laid down his life for us, crucified for us, and he was buried and he was resurrected. He was taken into heaven. And know what? He's going to return. He's going to return. Your life that you lay down for Christ will be given back to you. You don't lay down anything anything for the Lord that you will not get back. Oh, praise the Lord. You who say that you're in the army, let it be known that the hardships will come, but we must endure. We must, until we enter the kingdom, what's that? Joy will come. Come on, sing it. Joy will come. Joy will in the morning, joy will come. We give you the praises. Joy will come. We thank you for setting us free. Joy will come in the morning. Oh, God, we give you the glory and praises. Mm. Put your trust in the Lord and commit your life to him. Pray often. Let me encourage you to pray often. Come together in worship and fellowship and report and tell what God has done in your life. We've been here now going on maybe too long. <laughs> but have you taken this opportunity to share with your brother and sister on the right what God has done for you this week? It is my guesstimation that most of us have not shared with one another the blessing that you received this week from the Lord. Am I right? Boy, and how can we be encouraged if we don't even share with one another what God has done for us? Do you know if you tell me that God set you free from alcoholism, or drug abuse, or pornography, or some other sin... Do you know if I'm struggling with one of those sins, what it would mean to me? Wow, if he did it for him, he will do it for me. So it's very important that we share and worship what God has done for us. When the praise team come in in the morning and getting ready to say, Lord, girl, let me tell you how the Lord has blessed me. Hey, brother man, let me share with you how the Lord has blessed me. Wouldn't that jazz you up? Amen. Instead of, sister girl, let me tell you, she's been wearing the same shoes that I have. <laughs> we can do that so easy. We can do that so easy. Why we can't come in and say, hey, let me tell you what God did for me. Let's try to outdo each other. So, <laughs> so as recruits, all right, funny <laughs> Oh, Lord, I told somebody, who said that learning the word of God had to be boring? Why we can't giggle our way through the kingdom? Why, why we can't laugh our way to the kingdom of God? Right? We got something to laugh about. Got something to be joyful about. Got something to hope in, to build our life on. My goodness, why we can't have fun with the word of God. Amen? And God is going to send you out there into the world, and he's going to give you everything you needed. When I was in the military, they gave me my 38. They gave me my M16. They gave me my a grenade launcher. They gave me body armor to wear. They gave me a helmet to wear. They even gave me boots to put on my feet. They gave me camouflage fatigues to wear. Well, folks, God has given you an armor, and he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He also told us that this old devil, not only is he on earth, but he even comes up into heaven and tries to stir things up. So God said, I want you to put on your full armor. He said, I want you to know your enemy. He said, I want you to know the truth, that the truth will set you free. He said, I want you to put on your breastplate of righteousness. He said, I want you to shard yourself with the gospel of peace. He said, I want you to take up the shield of faith. 
put on that helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. And folks, he says, pray and petition. Pray and petition. You wouldn't think that would be an arsenal for a person that's in the army, but prayer will bring you through every time. Listen to uh, this prayer that was given for Philemon. Of verses 1, chapter 1, verses 4 to 7. I always thank God when I pray for you, Philemon. Check this out. I always give thanks to God when I pray for you, Pastor Sheila. When I pray for you, Miss Tanya. When I pray for you, Riley. When I pray for you, Tamron. When I pray for you, Brian, I always give thanks. Sister Debbie, I always give thanks when I pray for you. Pastor Jim, I always give thanks. Brother Orlando, I always give thanks. Brother Jim, I always give thanks. I always give thanks, Brother Thomas, when I pray for you. And Sister Lips, I always give thanks. And number one, Tasi, I always give thanks to God when I pray for you. Because I keep hearing of your trust in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. So we should pray for each other. When you go into a battle, you got to go as a team. You got to go as a church. So petition for all the saints. Protect your comrades when they're in battle. You protect them. You can protect your comrades with prayer. We protect Pastor Shula and his lovely wife in prayer. And we petition to God on their behalf. We have to protect the Hope Center of Christ with prayer. We got to petition on behalf of the Hope Center of Christ. Amen? I'm almost getting there. Don't say that, Debbie. John 15, verses 7 to 8. It says, Jesus says, but if you stay joined to me and my words remain in you, you may ask any request you like and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit. This brings great glory to my Father. He said, if my word remained in you, you can ask. People don't even want to put this word in them, but they still want to ask. And when they don't receive, they want to know why. Put the word in you. Amen? Amen. And then John 13, uh, verses 34 to 35, our commander-in-chief, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, So now I am giving you a new commandment, Love each other just as I loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Amen? All right. So in the army of the Lord, here we go, and I'm finishing up. In the army of the Lord, our command is to go and tell the world about Jesus. In the army of the Lord, we are to spread hope. In the army of the Lord, we are to spread forgiveness. In the army of the Lord, we are to sow peace. In the army of the Lord, we are to spread goodness. In the army of the Lord, we must spread and educate and teach people about repentance. In the army of the Lord, our commander tells us that we must encourage people to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In the army of the Lord, let's spread joy. In the army of the Lord, our command is to teach about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. In the army of the Lord, we are to spread love, love, love. And John 15, in conclusion, it says, I command you to love each other in the same way that I have loved you. And here is how to measure that love. The greatest love shown is when people lay down their lives for their friends. The greatest friend we ever had is Jesus. 
the greatest friend we ever had is Jesus. Joy will come. Just a little louder for me. Keep on doing it. Worship the God who made heavens. Worship the God who made the seas. One more time. Worship the earth and all that's in it. Fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be safe. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. be in the army of the Lord. I want to walk with faith and hope and love, and I want to be in the army of the Lord. like to ask uh, Pastor Harold and Pastor Jim to come up here and join me this morning and uh, they don't know I'm going to do this but uh, I, I just want you to know that it was about it was a couple years ago almost three years ago um, back at the Crystal Cathedral um, as senior pastor I was looking for to build a preaching team and there was one guy we were looking at really closely, and we were considering asking him to join our preaching team. Come on up here, you guys. Just stand one on either side of me, if you would. Bookends. Handsome bookends. My lucky lady. I'm a, well, I'm a lucky lady. I got lots of handsome bookends, because I also have my husband and I have my four sons. But at any rate, um, we were looking for one guy, and we were doing some um, fasting and praying. And one day, as we were doing that, the Lord said to me, Sheila, you're overlooking Jim Penner that simple that and and I was like I am and this was serious you don't share the pulpit with just anybody and I called other prayer partners that I knew heard from the Lord and um, we prayed we prayed in the spirit together we prayed and fasted and and they said Sheila they affirmed they said yes Jim Penner you've been don't overlook Jim Penner he's supposed to be the par that person on the preaching team and so I asked Jim, and has not God used Jim in a powerful, anointed way? You know? And then 
I got a similar message with Harold. Harold was tucked away teaching, you know, kids in a Sunday school classroom and helping doing some Bible studies here and there. But I knew that God had a powerful anointing on Harold. I knew it. And I and I just want you guys to know that that we are a team. We are together. We are unified like the Trinity is unified, the three of us. And I just want you to know that we love you. We're here together as a team. I, I see how God uses Jim to speak some ways into you that I can't and Harold can't and vice versa, that without one or the other, it's incomplete. This pulpit is incomplete, but together it's complete. And I just want you to know that. I want you to know that I'm a proud mama when I hear these two guys up there. I'm going, yes, yes, Amen. yes, look at them. Look at the anointing. Look how God is using them. And I'm proud. I am. I'm proud that God spoke to me and said, Sheila, put them up there. Because we all, including me, benefit because of it. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, peace that passes understanding, faith that is so unshakable, nothing can rock it, and hope that is unsinkable even in the deepest, most turbulent waters, and love that is unquenchable even in hostile territory. May God give that to you today. May your hope be centered in Jesus Christ every single day. And Lisa, am I supposed to say something? I can't see. The food. Do you want to come up? Well, come on up, Lisa. Come on up, Lisa. No, Lisa, 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 Lisa. You, Lisa. Come on. Come on. Come on, Lisa. Lisa! You can do it, Lisa! Did you hear a yes, sir, when I called her name? <laughs> or yes, ma'am? <laughs> Look at this reluct reluctant warrior. Look at this adorable young mom. I'm happy to help, but I honestly don't know much about this. Um, I'm just helping out this week because Susan's on a little trip. Um, we have these bags at the back. If you could take these home and fill them up with um, new toys and canned goods and bring them back next week so we can help our families that live in the motels. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. She did good, didn't she? Okay. All right. In closing, who wants to be in the army of God? Amen. Would you want to just stand for the Lord? Amen. Stand for the Lord. Take a stand for him. The world needs it. Lives are, are, we're losing lives. And you guys are, can save them. You can save them by laying down your own. So go in peace. Go in love. Love strong. Believe strong. Forgive strong this week. Amen. <laughs>